Crazy Life of William Wild Bill Cotolo. After Alphonse Persico's arrest in Florida for a gun charge, Alley Boy Persico, along with Thomas Gioli, aka Tommy Shots, would lure William Wild Bill Cotolo to a meeting where he would have him killed just after promoting him to underboss as a peace offering after the deadly Arena Persico War. Because of fear, Wild Bill would make a move to take over the family in Alphonse Persico's absence, demonstrating yet again the treachery, betrayal, and Machiavellian mindset of Cosa Nostra. Wild Bill Cotolo began his mob career with the Columbos and Pasquale Amato's crew quickly rising to captain and would go on to become one of the more powerful members of the Columbos. Cotolo was given the nickname Wild Bill after beating up his own brother with a baseball bat and was also given the nickname Billy Fingers after losing one finger and mutilating another in a work accident while working at a hamburger store. Wild Bill Cotolo was a major component in the Colombo Civil War between the Arena Faction and the Persico Faction on the side of Arena and was the first to retaliate for the Arena Faction after Persico unsuccessfully made a hit attempt on Vic Arena. In response to Persico's failed hit attempt, on November 18th of 1991, Wild Bill sent the hit team to take out Persico loyalists and hitman Gregory Scarpa Sr., aka the Grim Reaper. But Scarpa, who was in the car with his daughter and granddaughter at the time, managed to get away from the crew, who hopped out of the car firing shots at Scarpa and his family. The Arena Persico War, which lasted from 1991 to 1993, eventually came to an end, but not until after lots of death and blood was spilled on the streets in New York, including Persico loyalist Jimmy Angelino. It was said he was responsible for the murder of Henry Smurra, aka Hank the Bank, outside of a Brooklyn donut shop, but was later said to be Catolo crew member Vincent Chicky DiMartino. Another Persico loyalist, Joe Karachi, was spotted by Cotolo while Cotolo was driving out of Sheep's Head Bay, Brooklyn, leaving a social club, and the two men traded shots in broad day on a busy Brooklyn street, but neither man was hit. The bloody Colombo family war would come to an end in 1993, after the Vicarina faction captain and one of New York's most powerful labor racketeers, Joey Scopo, was taken out by Colombo associate John Papa. Due to the havoc caused throughout New York City during the war, Vicarina and his mentor, Pasquale Amato, would be handed down lengthy prison sentences. But as for Wild Bill Cotolo and his trusted hitter, Joseph Campanella, as well as the other members of the crew, they would go on to win their 1994 trial on charges related to the Colombo War after the crew's lawyer, legendary mob attorney Jimmy LaRosa, shot back against the FBI after a failed attempt at getting LaRosa removed from the case, who were claiming he was the Colombo's longtime trusted house counsel, to which LaRosa responded by accusing FBI agents of protecting Colombo hitman and 30 year informant with the FBI, Greg Scarper and allowing Scarpa to commit various crimes and murders for the mob while simultaneously acting as an informant, ultimately leading to Cotolo, as well as six other crew members' not guilty verdict just four days before Christmas. Jimmy LaRosa walked the leadership of the Colombo family out of the courtroom doors. After the verdict, Cotolo was quoted saying, I've got the best lawyer. This is the best present ever. While Wild Bill Cotolo was on trial, Gambino boss John Gotti also stood to face charges for the Castellano hit and Gambino family takeover, in which Gotti would not have such luck, when on April 2nd, 1992, the jury found Gotti guilty on all charges after just 14 hours of deliberation, ending with Gotti being sentenced to life in prison, serving out the remainder of his life in Marion, Illinois' Supermax prison as inmate number 182, Dash 053, spending 23 hours a day locked down, ultimately dying of throat cancer. Wild Bill was cut down to soldier after the war, and in 1999, after Alphonse Persico was released from prison, Cotolo was then promoted to underboss as a move to create peace. But in a twist, Alley Boy Persico was locked up again and would be sentenced to go serve time in a Florida prison, leaving the Persicos and former underboss John DeRoss, aka 
Jackie Zambuca, fearful that with Cotolo's massive wealth, power, and respect, he would make a move to take over the family. So in response, according to Dino Calabro's testimony, Thomas Gioli, a.k.a. Tommy Schatz, boss at the time, had crew member Dino Calabro, a.k.a. Big Dino, meet him at a church in Massapequa, Long Island, called the Our Lady of Lord's Church, and ordered the hit on William Wild Bill Cotolo, simply by placing his hand over his heart and raising up four fingers, and according to Calabro, no words were even spoken. Following the order, Alley Boy Persico sends Thomas Gioli, Big Dino and Dino Saracino to meet Cotolo at a park and bring him to a meeting called by Alley Boy. But when they picked up Cotolo, they took him to Saracino's home in Brooklyn, and according to Calabro's testimony, upon walking into the house, Wild Bill said, Alley Boy is here, right? To which he pulled out a gun and pointed it at Cotolo's head. Cotolo would scream, whoa, as the fatal shot was fired and Cotolo fell backwards into a closet. Law enforcement originally believed Cotolo was murdered by rivals and dumped in the ocean, but that wasn't the case, although they did take his wallet, beeper, and jewelry and mix them into a bucket of concrete which they dumped off a pier in Brooklyn. Cotolo's body was then hogtied and wrapped in garbage bags and transported to an industrial area in Farmingdale, Long Island, New York where he was wrapped in a blue tarp and buried. His body was found October 6, 2008, with his shoes on as a sign of disrespect. Two other bodies were found at that burial site, both connected to organized crime. The location was given up by Joey Campanelli, AKA Joey Keynes, who told police he was located by the train tracks in the woods near that area. On top of the fear Cotolo instilled in his enemies during his reign with the Columbos, Wild Bill was also a wealthy businessman and labor racketeer, owning restaurants and clubs in New York and Miami, Florida. Cotolo was involved in several charities and also wasn't afraid to use intimidation and extortion to help him amass wealth, making him a powerful and respected man, which helped Cotolo lead and command a strong crew of men. Also, along with the hit attempt we spoke about earlier against Greg Scarpa, it said Cotolo had made various other attempts on taking out the Grim Reaper. And according to sources online, Scarpa Sr. had also made multiple attempts on Cotolo's life as well. Just 10 days after Cotolo's crew fired shots at Scarpa and his family, Scarpa planned on having a team of hitters dress up as Hasidic Jews to take Cotolo out at his girlfriend's parents' home on Thanksgiving Day, being that the girlfriend's parents lived in a Hasidic neighborhood. But the hit was canceled when the morning of the planned hit, newspaper headlines came out revealing Greg Scarpa's status as an informant with the FBI. It's also said that even before the war, Scarpa seen Cotolo as a threat when it was revealed later on that Scarpa had been informing on Cotolo and his different rackets to the FBI. Another interesting detail about Wild Bill, Cotolo, and crew is that while Wild Bill was locked up and his crew were awaiting trial in MDC, Brooklyn, the whole team of wise guys were all located in the same wing of the jail, and according to newspaper articles released at the time, the men were said to have taken over the jail. The men were placed together in the government's attempt to give, give them a better chance to fight their case, but they started losing control of the jail when the wise guys started hoarding food from other inmates and took over the TV room even hanging an Italian's only sign. Prison guards even went on to tell the press that while that sign was hanging, no other inmates would enter the room. Eventually the jail split the guys up, moving them to different floors before they went on to beat their case and all the men were released except for two who were held on unrelated charges, Chicky DiMartino and Frankie Notch. According to Wild Bill Cotolo's son, Bill Cotolo Jr., after his father failed to return from a meeting with Alley Boy, he quickly suspected his father's other family as being responsible, especially when shortly after Cotolo disappeared, John DeRoss, on orders from the Persicos, showed up to Cotolo's home in Staten Island looking for a $1.5 million cash stash. Cotolo was said to have hidden, which DeRoss never recovered and even took over Cotolo's bocce social club on 11th Avenue in Brooklyn. Cotolo Jr. would try to avenge his father's death, 
not by going after his father's killers with a gun, but instead voluntarily strapping a wire to himself and recording conversations between himself and other members of the Columbos. Working with the feds on an undercover mission they called Operation Payback. Cotolo Jr., along with his family, joined the witness protection program and went into hiding, but now shows his face online. All in all, Wild Bill Cotolo was a solid gangster, an earner who lived by the code and stood up until the day he died due to the reoccurring theme of betrayal within La Cosa Nostra. If you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and click the notification bell to make sure you receive notifications on all new content. Thank you for your support and thank you for watching. Until next time, it's Wise Guy TV.